we ended last episode talking about fear. And if you have not gone and listened to every episode we have with Jamie, you need to do it right now. The last two weeks on Thursday, we have done episodes together and you need to go start with the first one and and track on through till this week because it has been incredible. And Jamie, today I want to talk about what we ended with last time, which is fear. Mm -hmm. So many people resonated with that. They did not want that episode to be over. Mm -hmm. They wanted you to keep going. Yeah. So this week we're going to, we're going to really zero in on that. And, and we talked about what it would look like if people lived without fear. Yeah. And I know that is a passion of yours. Yes. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, this, that's why I was interested in the, the book that I wrote called Living Fearless came out of the idea of what would happen if we took 400 men for 10 hours and all we worked on was um, taking away fear in their lives. What would happen in that room? And wh whatever their background, whatever, what the, the, what, what's common among humans is their fear. That's, what you, that's what act, actually what unites people is that we're all afraid. Um, and so that's, that's been the great, in my own life, the greatest part of my own life is understanding how the Lord intentionally draws me into places where I'm most afraid in order to walk me through them. And it is the greatest love that does that. Mm -hmm. So the great, the, the greatest part of who you are is just beyond your deepest fear. And the fear is the way the enemy prevents us from discovering the depth of, of not just who I am, but who God really is and who the other is, who the others are in the world. Because what separates me from Muslims and Hindu and people that disagree with me is our fear of each other. That's what separates us, is our fear. Take away the fear and the reconciliation, the connection is dramatic and pretty fast. Yeah, talk about that. You've seen this happen yeah. in your life. So um, if you can imagine, so at the deepest level, I, and you just have to think about this uh, when you have a chance to alone with the Lord. It, one of the questions, well, like what I pray every day, my prayer to God every day is, God, I want to receive from you all that you have for me today. I don't want to do anything. I want to receive from you. And, and, and the reason we pray that is, is because the only way into the kingdom of God is by receiving, not by doing anything. It's by receiving a gift that's already been paid for and you have to receive it. And Jesus says, the son of man didn't come to be served. He came to serve. And he says to the Samaritan woman, unless you drink from me, if you drink from me, from you will flow the rivers of living water. So the very first act of obedience is to receive from God. So what would prevent us from receiving from God? We're afraid of him. Deep, deep down, we, at a deep level, I kind of have to protect myself even from God because what might God do? <laughs> And it's very deep, and we're, as Christians, we're very good at never dealing with that issue or asking that question. And so what the Lord does out of his amazing kindness, which his kindness leads us to repentance to a new way of thinking, he leads us into places that scare us. And he's saying, follow, don't just go in and see what happens. I'm going to walk ahead of you into it. And we're going to come out on the other side of this together. And you will never be afraid of this again. Wow. And so, and, and the way he does it is Jesus, he walks into death himself and comes up on the other side. And he says in Hebrews chapter two, I have taken away the power of death from the one who had the power of death, Satan. And I have released you people, humans, from the burden of the fear of death. Wow. It's not even death itself. It's just being afraid of death that hurts us. And death to us is rejection, failure. P I do something that doesn't work. That's a kind of dying and we avoid it in every way that we can, right? And so, but, but Jesus is saying, I want to free you from all that kind of fear in order that you can live at a level beyond what you could even ask or imagine. Not when, you're, when you go to heaven, now. What stops me? I'm afraid of it. I'm scared of it. And so the Lord is constantly inviting, follow me, follow, come with me. I'm afraid. Hold my hand. 
I'm going with, we're going together. Come with me like that. And if you can't go on that day, he waits Mm. and he loves you. And he's like, ready? Want to do it now? Wait. And the Israelites get all the way to the promised land and they can't go in because they lose their identity again. We're grasshoppers in our own eyes. And, and Joshua and Caleb are like, no, we're not. We're not in that identity anymore. We're a nation of believers. We're, we're, we're going to be a light on a hill. We're not grasshoppers. But the whole population swings back into the false identity and we're not that strong and they'll beat us and they're strong. And they won't go in and they start to wander. And after one year, two years, 10 years, the Lord's right. Ready? Are you ready? Because the day you say, let's go, we're going. But 20 years, 30 years until they die. And the next generation, do you want to go? Yes, like that. Mm. And Caleb and Joshua never give up and they get to go. But that's the beauty of the Lord. He's not there like, you get one shot at this. It's not true. He's every day. Do you want to go? Mm. You will love this. Do you want to go? Come with me. But I'm afraid. I know you're afraid. Come with me. And then you go on to the other side of it. And it's like, oh my gosh. And you get into this next level of who you are and you discover, oh my gosh, I didn't know I had that in me. And the Lord's like, I knit that together in you. And there's more than that. And, and, and like when I'm sharing my faith with people that don't know Christ, this kind of sharing is what energizes humans. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not a fear. I'm going to scare you of hell. That's just fear on top of the fear they already feel about everything else. It's like, no, no, it's, I'm inviting you into fearlessness. Not bravery, that's temporary. It's this, it's just you're losing your fear. And then you get, and then as soon as you get through that, the Lord takes you to the next level. And then he goes, did you like that? Yes, that was incredible. Okay, let's, do, now let's try this. Like any good parent, did you, did you make it through first grade? Yeah, oh, that's the end. No, second grade and third grade. And, like it's this beautiful, humans have the biology of transcendence to grow and oh, go up and out and up and out. But to do that, you have to go in and down into your fear and into your guilt and shame and let the Lord have it and let him move you forward like that. And so part of our reputation in the world of counterterrorism and all that stuff is that the reason people are in conflict is because they're afraid. All conflict is sourced in fear everywhere, all the time. Every domestic dispute, every argument is sourced in people being afraid that you disrespected me or I'm not worthy or I'm unseen. All the way up to countries saying, you're going to ruin us and we got to take your land as we're seeing. Go into that situation, take away fear, everything changes. So, so we started experimenting. Do I need a gun? Do I need drunk? No, we need the capacity to take away the fear of the person that we're speaking to. How can we do that? We have to be fearless ourselves first. You can't give away what you don't have. So we have to go into deep into our relationship with Christ and say, Lord, what am I afraid of? Lead me into what I'm afraid of and show me what, who you are in that, those instances. And he just does it so gently and gradually and builds so beautifully. And, um, and so as we learn that over time and these, we train in this all the time, this is what disciplined discipleship is. It's learning not to be afraid. It's not learning Bible verses. It's learning not to be afraid. <laughs> it's learning to believe what's true about God experientially in your heart. You shall know and experience the truth, and that truth will set you free. What's the number one truth? Jesus says, you cannot die, you cannot die, you will never die. Mm. That's what he came, not only to say it, to do it in front of us and take away death right in front of us. And So I want to talk about even just that fear, because I think that is the biggest fear right. people have. And, and, and when you can get rid of that fear, there's a lot of other fears that kind of fade away. And so you've had to face that. You've faced that in multiple ways with your right. family, with your own life. That's right. Why why are you not afraid anymore? Because because I believe I be, I've come to experientially believe that we're eternal creatures, which is what God always has intended for us to know and understand about ourselves that this that we're in is not it. And so it, it's interesting. We try so hard to hold on to this because we're uh, because we don't really believe that we're eternal. 
Like th- there's nothing, our belief deep down is that there's nothing that's going to be any better than this. This is the best it's going to be. And so we got to hold on to this and protect ourselves and maintain this. When if we really understood the truth, we would say what Paul says, to live is the hard part, to die is the best part. Mm. When you get to that place, in th- it makes this just joy. I know you've come close to death mm-hmm. because just by nature of where you've tread your feet, have you lost teammates? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In, in, uh, in Iraq, our whole, we had a, I, I had a team and we had a senior team and a rookie team, you know, where the senior team changed the rookie team. And then, yeah, in one incident, we lost the whole senior team. Wow. Yeah. Like one day, boom, just, it just, that's what happens. That's the way life is. It's a mystery. Life is but a vapor that appears for a little while and vanishes away. And so, um, yeah, then to go have to ID all those bodies and then come back and tell our young brand new team, hey, you're now the senior team and you're 23 and you've never worked overseas before and now you're the senior team. And then immediately they're fearful, of course. And so I said to them, you can, you can, we're not going to make you stay in country, um, but bef- you can decide. But before you decide, when you make decisions in life, what I want to teach you is how to make a decision from peace to peace. Most of our decision-making is from conflict trying to find peace. That's the worst way to think about things. Come to peace in the conflict and then make a decision. And so we spent 48 hours working on fear, getting rid of fear. And then when we were all at peace... Then we ask the question to God, do we stay or do we go? And that was in 2004. And they're all still there today. Oh my goodness. They're all in a place of peace because we make decisions in places of fear. Mm. We make permanent decisions in seasons that are temporary. And that's a mistake. That's how the enemy works. What would you say to the person that's listening and thinking, you're taking this too far? You're, you're going into the most dangerous places in the world and expecting God to protect you. Mm-hmm. My, I would say, see, that's funny. That's a, fear, that's a fear response, right? That's like, man, I'm not going to do that. I, but the beauty is I have a certain identity that God gave me. My, my wife has a certain identity that God gave her. My kids have a certain identity. Those identities were knit together to be in these situations, not to do them, to be in them. We discover greater depths of who we are and who God is living in these situations. Every identity is different. There had to be days that your wife didn't want you to go, didn't want, I mean, she would go with you though, right? Yeah, she was there the whole time. Yeah, so there had to be times one of you was more afraid than the other. Absolutely, or... yeah, absolutely. And then it, it, it's, it's learning to just constantly take that fear to Christ. Like it's, the, it's your life blood is your, is your connection to God. I think one reason your story is so compelling is because mm-hmm. a lot of people preach what you're saying. You, you've often heard the saying mm-hmm. that take your fear to God. You've heard that a million times, but when you're saying it, it just means more because you, you literally had to do that yeah. and then, or you would have par- been paralyzed. What You never would have gone. Never would have gone, right. Or you would have gone there and just self-protected the whole time and been of no value. The, see, see the life of the life in Christ is Philippians chapter two, where our, we have a, we have a savior who didn't consider heaven something to be held on to, but emptied himself and made himself available to life as, as a human. And even unto death, the death of the cross in, in order to win, to bring love and transformation to his enemies. So if we summed it up, Jesus, the example of Jesus is other focus, self-emptying, unconditional love for his enemy, which is what we're supposed to be if we're going to live as Christ. Other focused, self-emptying, no one's taking it from me. No one has power over me. I'm offering it, self-emptying, unconditional love, not just for my friends, for my enemy. Where I'm to live that out is me asking God, what do you want me to know and what do you want me to do? For us to go live in those scenarios is the greatest joy of our life. We didn't get dragged there. We didn't go there because we felt like we owed God something. We went there and in those places, Christ served us. And then it allowed us to turn around and serve the others that were around us in those scenarios. That's all he's inviting us into, wherever that is. And I really believe this, no place is any harder than any other. Hmm. 
It, it's not true. Can't wait. If, if we've seen the things that God does in this life, what in, and it's been amazing. It's been sad. It's been, we've lost people, but what's it going to be like next? Is it hard to be in America for you? Not really because, um, because I, I hurt for my country. I, I'm sad for the level of conflict that we're in every single day here at every level. I don't think, I don't think we know how to do things without conflict anymore. So I'm happy to be here because I can be with people and we can talk about all conflict is based in fear. All conflict is based in fear. And so whenever anyone's upset, when we go in and work with police departments or um, whatever we're, whoever we're working with, my first question, I, I ask every group this question, doesn't matter, male, female, how they identify it, what gender, what, it doesn't matter how they identify themselves. It's not their true identity. And I want to get to the true identity because that'll rescue them. And I just ask them, tell me the main negative emotion you deal with on a regular basis. Go, go, you, what, what's the main, all the way around the room, any room, every age, middle school, high school, police, any main negative emotion, fear, 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 fear. So we have a room full of fearful people. How, what are we going what problem are we going to solve? None. Because fearful people can't be other focused. And so they can't cooperate and they can't sacrifice. As long as that fear is the decision maker, all fear does is separate a room. And so, but boy, you pull, we, and we can, that fear can go like now, now. You learned the fear, you can unlearn it. All fear is learned. No one has the power to make you afraid of anything. You learn to be afraid of things. We can unlearn that fear. That's becoming fearless. Once you take the fear out of that room, and we've been in rooms where the political tension is so great here in the U.S. between groups, especially lately, and we take the fear out of that room, those human beings are no longer problem solving. Now they're, they're coming up with creative solutions. They become co-creators with God. And co-creators with God can transform anything they put their hand to. Mm. Fearful people can't do it. And that's why we can't reform, transform education. We can't transform criminal justice system. We can't transform the healthcare system because we're all afraid and we're all fighting to protect our little piece of the thing. Take that fear away. And I'm telling you in a matter of months, this would all be different. And that's the beauty of the kingdom of God that's here and now. What would you like to say? This is your last few minutes with everybody that, I know. I mean, first of all, thank you so much mm-hmm. for for giving us this much time. Yeah. It's been incredible. What would you say to the person listening right now that's driving and crying? Cause mm. they want, they want mm. what you are, what you are suggesting and mm. they don't know how to get it. Yeah. I would, I would just say, just ask the Lord, just say, Lord, help me to be able to say what I'm most afraid of. Help you help me be able to tell the truth. About what am I most afraid of? And let, just let those thoughts come. I'm afraid of failure. I'm afraid for my kids. I'm afraid about the economy. I'm afraid to say that fear. And then ask the Lord, where did I learn to be afraid of that? Because you learn it young. You learn, where did I, where's the first time I learned to be afraid of money? Because I wasn't born afraid that I didn't have money. I learned it. Where did I first learn it? Just quickly. And then Jesus, you were there with me when I was learning to be afraid of money. What do you want me to know about that? What do you want me to know about that? And let him speak to you. And then ask, what identities did I take on myself in that fear? I'm poor. I've got to make a vow that I'm never going to be poor again. What did I take? Identities did I take on in that fear? Give them to Jesus. Watch them. Give them to Jesus. And then ask the Lord, what do you call me? What do you say about me? And listen to what he says about you and what he calls you and how he identifies you and learn to move in that identity. But do it every day. Don't, it's not one time, it's every day. And when you do it in community, it's even more powerful. Amen to that. Love it. Thank you. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and there's a ton more content for you. So go down below and you can subscribe to my channel and we post about twice a week. So come on, come hang out with us.